Namaste. Um, today we will be discussing an interesting topic uh, called centrifugal force correction for Newtonian PA. Right. Um, so we already know that in the derivation of straight Newtonian law, we have uh, finally arrived to a relation called CP is equal to uh, 2 sin square theta. And uh, uh, because uh, we have considered the flow over a flat surface in that, right? So now there is a question, when there is a flat surface, it is fine. What happens if there is a curved surface, right? So that is what we will uh, see here. If we consider the curved surface, we will have the uh, effect of centrifugal force, right? that centrifugal force act on the fluid element that comes into picture that is what our discussion is today so i acknowledge john d anderson hypersonic and high temperature gas dynamics right so um, as usual i have discussed this in the straight newtonian law we have uh, um, the flat surface and we have calculated the uh, cp that is equal to 2 sin square theta, right? Before we have done this derivation. Uh, then we had a discussion, right? You know, where we apply such uh, phenomena, say the velocity V infinity, uh, the phase stream velocity uh, that hit the flat plate, and then, you know, it uh, hit like a stream of pellets from the shotgun blast. Uh, which when uh, striking on the surface would lose all its momentum in the normal to the surface, but would move tangentially to the surface uh, without the loss of tangential momentum that we had a discussion. Then we have derived the CP is equal to 2 sin square theta. And of course, we had a discussion on modified uh, uh, Newtonian uh, theory, and we have derived the CP is equal to CP max sin square theta. That was our previous discussion. Now, the question is, what happens if there is a curved surface? So, this is the flat surface, um, but most of our cases, we have such a curved surface, right? And we have a blunt body and, uh, you know, curved surface. So, we need to include the centrifugal force acting on the fluid element, right? So let us consider the centrifugal effects and you know include it in the Newtonian theory, right? Then it will be totally consistent with the theoretical mechanics. And hence we consider this, right? So okay. Now um, so here to understand the physical nature, right? So the the physical nature of the centrifugal force on the flow field, let us consider this as a fluid element, right? So this is a fluid element, right? You have a fluid element. Okay. So this is a fluid element. And it is moving with a velocity V, right? Here is a velocity V. And along a curved streamline, right? This streamline is a curved streamline with a radius of curvature of. So this R is the uh, radius of curvature. Okay. So this R is the uh, radius of curvature. Right. So the fluid element is experiencing a radial acceleration here. Right. So here it experiences some radial acceleration. So that radial acceleration, usually we consider that, um, you know, in, in such direction and then we make it as V square by R, right? R is the radius of curvature and V is the velocity, right? So this is a centrifugal force, right? Now, um, here there is a centrifugal force that we know, correct? So if there is a centrifugal force on the fluid element, the pressure on the other side, that P plus DP, on the top surface of the fluid element, 
uh, it should be large enough right um than this particular pressure peak right so there will be a positive pressure gradient in this uh, direction in the radial direction right so you see uh, you have a centrifugal force acting here right centrifugal force acting here and you have a um uh, or radius of curvature and the centrifugal force we consider as v square by r and here there is a pressure p is acting on the fluid element and on the other side you have a pressure p plus dp right so uh, here we can theoretically say that the flow um over the convex surface right the pressure would decrease in the normal direction that we can uh, say in our uh, you know experience so uh, this is a normal trend in the fluid dynamics right that the flow over a convex surface the pressure would decrease in the normal direction okay so for flow over a convex surface we should expect the newtonian pressure to be decrease due to the centrifugal force now uh, say let us consider the um, so we will come back we will have much uh, better uh, uh, picture here so let us consider the newtonian flow here right here is a newtonian flow don't worry about the streamline because uh, we have enlarged the uh, streamline and they have shown here right steam tube actually so um, all the particles that impact impact on the surface uh, subsequently moves tangential to the surface right that we know already because that was the basics from the newtonian theory right so here say uh, let us uh, consider say for a time being we can consider uh, the layer the shock layer is so thin and the distance between this is del m right here we have considered del n right so del n is uh, um the maybe we can consider a layer of del n right so as also we can consider assume that the del n is very small and thin maybe later we will uh, make this to zero and we will do the calculation okay now let us consider a point i here this is what the point of interest for us this is a body surface and this radius of curvature r you have a centrifugal force we know that there is p plus dp and here in the pressure on the other side right so ultimate idea is to calculate the pressure at point i okay now let us say in this diagram say s and n we have a n here and s n and n or the coordinates local local coordinates which is in tangential and in the perpendicular direction of the steam line right so we can say that this is s and here you have n which is tangential and the uh, perpendicular to the steam line now the layer of the flow over the body is so thin that we know right uh, and we assume r say r will be same right this r will be so same if we consider the thickness of this layer is so small right so let us um, uh, say the surface at point i is at an angle theta here you have an angle theta with respect to the free stream right then assume that another point to right point to made at the outer edge of the layer right um, so it is like this layer with respect to the uh, theta i again right so when you draw you will have theta i and theta i right so theta 2 is equal to theta i okay now let us consider this steam tube right this is a steam tube right 
So let us say the height of this uh, steam tube is dy, right? So this is a steam tube, and this uh, distance is dy. Okay. And uh, where he we, here we consider y is the coordinate perpendicular from the free stream direction. So you have a y i also till point i. Right? We need to note this y i is right till point i. Now, um, so this steam tube immediately upon entering into this particular layer. Now the flow direction is assumed to be theta, right? Theta, you know the local uh, flow deflection, I mean local flow deflection angle of the body at that particular location and the magnitude is V infinity cos theta, okay. So if this is as consistent with the Newtonian model that we know already, we have derived before, right? So when the steam tube crosses the normal coordinate, right? normal coordinate m um, through the point i the thickness of the steam tube becomes dm right here it is a dy and when it crosses um, through this layer and you can consider this as a dm right and of course the velocity v now let us concentrate on the part of this steam tube okay only the steam tube uh, that is when it crosses m, say this point m. So at this location, we can write the Newton's second law, right, of motion, which states that we know the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force, and hence we can write this at this particular location. We can write the pressure gradient, that is, the p by dou n is a pressure gradient which is which can be equated to rho v square by r. right so this equation states that the centrifugal force per unit volume of the fluid element right centrifugal force per unit volume of a fluid element that is rho v square by r is exactly balanced by the normal pressure gradient, right? This is the normal pressure gradient and this is the centrifugal force per unit volume. Okay? Now, let us uh, start deriving. So, we basically know that um, dou P by dou N, that is the pressure gradient and rho V square by R is the centrifugal force per unit volume. Now, let us integrate this equation across the layer from point I to 2, right? Here you have a point I and here you have a point 2. Let us integrate this. So, so I can write like this integral dt that is from point P i to P 2. that is equal to uh, integral phase 0 to that thickness del m and rho v square by r into dm right rho v square by r into dm Now, um, okay, so let us assume the two dimensional flow here, right? And the constant mass through, I mean, the constant mass flow through the shaded steam tube, right? Here, the, the constant mass flow in the shaded steam tube, then we can uh, write here, say this pressure P2, right? So we can write this equation as P. 2 minus p i that is equal to uh, integral 0 to del n 
this del n we can write this del n right this del n we can write y i plus del n cos theta so we can write here this del n that is equal to y i plus del n cos theta i so here we have um, okay so this row v square right so in the, in the two dimensional um, flow we can write row infinity v infinity dy right row infinity v infinity dy can be written as rho v dy right here from here we can write rho infinity v infinity dy that can be equated to rho v dy here rho v and dy constant mass flow right even though the thickness changes and all so uh, from this equation Uh, we can write that rho infinity v infinity by r into v d right right so Uh, here note that the vertical coordinates right the vertical coordinates at the point i and 2 right say the vertical coordinate at point i so if you write at the point i you will write uh, y i and if at the point 2 here the vertical coordinate you will write y i plus del n Okay, so that we know. Okay. Now, uh, now let us have a limit. Right? Let us limit it. Say the y, the limit y is equal to zero and y is equal to y i plus delta n cos theta. Right. So let us make an assumption here. The del n is so small, right? We have already said over a period of time we will assume that del n becomes so small. Right? So when we write here, the assumption is that del n tends to zero. Then we can write y i will be very much. Greater than del n cos theta. Right. So let us write the equation again. E two minus e one. That is equal to integral zero to y i only because del n cos theta is very much smaller, right? So rho infinity v infinity by r into v d y, right? So uh, we will now make the uh, assumption like it is consistent with the Newtonian model, and you know we assume that the inelastic collisions of the fluid particles. Within the surface, where all normal momentum is lost, but tangential momentum is still preserved, right? So it is uh, like it is consistent to assume that the velocity of any given particle after the collision is constant, right? Do you remember we have studied something like it moves parallel, parallel to the um, uh, plate, and so on, right? so um, flow velocity along the shaded stream tube the flow velocity along the shaded stream tube is constant and we can write v is equal to v infinity cos theta right so that we had a discussion before right 
and again r is constant throughout for all the streamlines crossing uh, above n right i mean in n which is above i i to point right so let us uh, write this equation as uh, v is equal to v infinity cos theta and then let us substitute this here and we can write uh, p2 minus p1 is equal to uh, rho infinity uh, v infinity square by r into integral 0 to y i i cos theta v right and we already know some information regarding the r that is uh, from the um, uh, basic uh, definitions right so we can write the uh, radius of curvature r the radius of curvature r is equal to minus 1 by uh, d theta by ds at point i that is equal to minus 1 by d theta by dy i sin theta sin theta i so let us substitute this r here right um once we substitute r then we can write um p p i p is equal to because our ultimate aim is to calculate p i right yeah p i right p2 and p i i hope you remember p2 minus p i so p i will become p2 plus rho infinity v infinity square d theta by dy i into sin theta i and integral 0 to y i cos theta into dy right the same equation we have written by substituting the r is equal to minus 1 by d theta by dy at i and sin theta so um so this equation here um, at point 2 right here at point 2 the flow just uh, entering the layer and it is deflected through an angle theta i right right so here if you consider the centrifugal force is uh, not there at this particular point right because we know already that the centrifugal force is included in all other fluid elements so at the point 2 we can say that it is intact with the newtonian law right newtonian law and we can consider this point 2 as from the simple newtonian law and we can write this as say this is equal to p2 then it is equal to 2 sin square theta right right okay so this become to sin square theta okay to sin square theta do one thing it is not directly to sin square theta we can we can write now we can convert uh, all the pressure into cp the coefficient of pressure so let us write c c i so c p 2 right so that becomes 2 sin square theta plus 
2 into that half rho v square half rho v square so it will become 2 into uh, d theta by the void at i into sine theta i integral 0 to a cos theta d now you see this relation right so this relation is the newtonian pressure coefficient at the point i right it is Newtonian pressure coefficient right? at point I on any curved surface. Any curved surface. But you need to note one point here, uh, right? So this is for two dimensional surfaces. That is what our consideration. Two dimensional. Right? So our uh, Newtonian, uh, uh, right? Newtonian pressure coefficient we have derived for a curved surface by including the centrifugal force surface right so you remember this first term is a straight newtonian one right this first term is a straight newtonian one right and the second term uh, considers the effect of centrifugal force right so let us say this is a correction, theoretical correction for the centrifugal force effect. Right. Now let us consider an axisymmetric body. Right. Let us say for a for any axisymmetric body, we can write C P I that is equal to okay, the equation two sine square theta. To the theta by the y at i into sine theta i by y i integral zero to I cos theta into d right This is the equation. Now here let us consider the local cross-sectional area. So local cross-sectional area A is equal to we will say pi y2 unit. So we can write the equation, new equation, CP. That is equal to 2 times square theta i plus 2 into this y that we considered like d theta by d. A and if we consider that at the point i, then we can write sine theta i 
So here it is with zero to a i can be considered. Okay. But how this derivation from this one I recommend you can try this. Maybe you can apply this calculate the a and so on. Okay. So we arrive to the um, new equation called new equation. Right, that the CP i is equal to 2 sin square theta i in plus 2 into d theta by d a i and into sin theta i integral 0 to a i cos theta into d a. So, you actually this particular procedure is introduced by Adolf Bushman, right? His name is Bushman, he only gave the um, the correction, centrifugal correction, right? And hence this equation, right? So this particular uh, equation, this particular equation is uh, famously called as Newtonian Bushman theorem. Right. So um, today we have studied something uh, which is very interesting by considering the Newtonian theory. Right, considering the Newtonian theory, and we have arrived to a particular uh, derivation that is CP is equal to 2 sin square theta i plus the centrifugal correction term. Right, so uh, let us recall once again the idea of Newtonian theory is like considering a flat plate and the you know the pellets which fits and moves tangentially to the surface and all those things we have studied. But what happens if there is a curved surface, right? So when there is a curved surface, what we need to consider? So our consideration here is if there is a fluid element, then it will be having a centrifugal force, right? So let us consider the centrifugal force. When we consider a centrifugal force, um, we consider a streamline, right? Curved streamline. And then we consider a steam tube with the thickness of dy and it is entering into the layer and it becomes a dm and so on. Our ultimate idea is to measure the pressure at the point i. Right? So by doing all these things, like you know, we first equate the pressure gradient uh, to the centrifugal force and right. Then uh, finally, uh, we arrive to the Newton Bushman theory. Right? Newton Bushman theory states that um, the CPI is equal to 2 sin square theta i plus the centrifugal uh, force effect, right? Force correction. So, um, okay, so this is what the discussion is. Uh, I stop at this point. Right. Then we will continue the uh, further points, uh, especially in our uh, Newton Bushman theory, right? And how this Newtonian model, modified Newtonian model, and Newton Bushman behaves, and all this information we will see, right? In the next class, probably. So I uh, stop at this point, right? So. Thank you very much.